Good evening. Three men accused of murdering a Saskatoon woman at her front door will be going directly to trial. The Crown will proceed by direct indictment against Kyle Halbauer and Randy O'Hagan, who are from Lloydminster, as well as Joshua Petron from Edmonton. That means there will be no preliminary hearings for the three men. The trio are charged with gunning down 34-year-old Lori Ann Santos last September. Police allege the three men shot and killed Santos in a case of mistaken identity. No date has been set for the start of the trial. While the temperatures here in the border city are a bit on the cooler side, it's a different story for our four-legged friends. According to a local veterinarian, even on a regular day, temperatures in your car can get to dangerous levels for your pets. Now, Dr. Joanne Heaver says she sees her share of animals with heat stroke come through the clinic every summer. Now, she advises people to rethink leaving animals in their car. You hear every year about people leaving kids in the car. Um, it's the same thing with dogs. We see it, we hear about it, um, and this is a condition that it doesn't take very long. You don't need science or the numbers to kind of prove it. It's common sense. Now, some signs that your pet is suffering from heat stroke include heavy panting, gums changing color, and sudden collapsing. Now, of course, if you see any of these indicators, you're advised to get your pet out of the sun and hydrate them. But Heaver says many people make the mistake of giving them freezing cold water. Blood vessels, and it actually kind of does the opposite of what you want um, because when those blood vessels constrict, they can't release heat. Um, and so, you, you know, um, cool water, but not cold water and not ice water. Dr. Heaver says if your pet continues to show signs of heat stroke, you should visit your local veterinarian. Well, now in its second year, Ride for Angels takes place this Saturday with all the proceeds going to the Canadian Angel Men Syndrome Society. Now the motorbike ride began in an effort to bring awareness to the genetic disorder. Organizer Kat Fleming, whose son Ty was diagnosed with the disorder as a toddler, is hoping the event will help improve treatment and understanding for those with Angelman syndrome. We just want to bring support to families and, and raising awareness does that. If more people recognize it, then they're able to get the test done and able to get a diagnosis. Barbecues for the event will take place in Lloydminster, Wainwright and Cool Lake. Fleming is hopeful the weather will cooperate to bring in a large turnout of participants be great if we could raise what we did last year. Last year we did $35,000. We kind of nailed it right out of the park. So uh, due to generous people in our community and all of our sponsors, we way exceeded any expectation we had. Now the day will end at the Service Sports Centre with a pizza party and silent auction. Organizers are still looking for volunteers though to help out with the event. To donate or to, to, donate or to sign up to volunteer, you can contact Kent Fleming. Well, some students at Holy Rosary High School are learning the ups and downs of owning their own business. Now, as part of their entrepreneurship class, students became investors in their own startup company. As Kim Smith reports, the process was as close to the real thing as you could get. The idea to create moccasins was a collaborative effort. My grandpa kind of like nudged me about it and then my dad was like, yeah, you know what, you could make a lot of money from that. And this is where the magic happens. The Mock You Apparel team began working on the company in April. The grade 11 and 12 students bought into the company for $20 a share. Well, we had different people doing different things, like we had beaters and we had people who made the liners and then we had leather cutters. Student accountant Maria Baldovino was responsible for paying out the shareholders after the company made a profit. We uh, wrote out checks for $51 for most people and other people had higher and the others who did not invest in the company got a um, gift card from different places. The moccasins cost about $30 to make and they sell for $65 a pair. So far the company has sold 18 of the custom made shoes. Like I'll take a trace of your foot and then I'll measure it out and I'll do what you want. Like you can choose the color of the hide, color of the fur, color of the beads and I'll put it together for you. Their teacher Kelly Russell says the students learned skills they'll be able to take with them after graduation. We learned how to make a business plan and just the, the trials and tribulations of, of putting a business together. We saw it all in the classroom and every day it was like this is so cool, this is so real life. I don't know if I want to live off of it yet, like I don't know if it's going to make that much money but I'm definitely going to keep it running.
The students received mentorship from the mayor, some city councilors, and other local business owners. The team even won the Product Design of the Year at the Business Hall of Fame Awards Banquet earlier this month in Saskatoon. Kim Smith, Newcap News. This week's Pat Project, Graham and Jenny introduce us to Smokey, a five-year-old long-haired cat, and Marley, a chow-chow border collie cross, who are both looking for their forever homes. This nine-month-old chow-chow border collie cross is named Marley. She's updated on vaccinations, microchip, but is not yet spayed, and she will need to get a rabies vaccination once you come to adopt her. Marley is a shy, quiet little gal who is very affectionate. She loves to be right by your side. She can be a little bit wary of strangers, but once she gets to know them, she's very friendly. Marley is also crate trained and house trained, and she's just looking for a house to call her home. This is Smokey. Smokey is a five-year-old, long-haired, charcoal-color cat. He is neutered, updated on vaccinations, but will need to get his rabies vaccination once you adopt him. Smokey is a very affectionate cat. He loves to have his face rubbed, be picked up and get cuddles. And occasionally when he's not looking for cuddles, he likes to play. Smokey used to be an indoor cat and so he'd probably do best going to a home with the same atmosphere. And he's also quite social with other cats. We currently have him in the cat condo.